All right. Hey, and uh, Adam and Erica, if y'all want to help, especially when I start sharing screen, um, if you want to admit folks as they come in, you can sort of tag team that. Welcome. Good to see everyone. We're going to give it another couple minutes for folks to get on. But for folks that are just logging on, if you want to put your name and what county you're from in the chat, that'd be great. I see some familiar faces and some new faces. Hey, Nathan, Sarah, Ellen, hey, Scott, Richard. Good to see everyone. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go ahead and get started here. Oops. That was the wrong share screen. There we go. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put this in slideshow view and see if everyone can still see it. Is that is that showing up for folks? Says it's no. loading. All right. We're gonna try one more thing. Okay. Always gotta have at least one technical technical difficulty. <laughs> All right, and we'll start the slideshow first. <laughs> All right, so we're not going to do it in slide sharing mode. We'll just do it in the We'll just see if it works in this mode. We'll just do it old fashioned presenter mode. <laughs> All right. Can y'all see that? Yes. All right. Well, it is so good to see everyone. Um, this is our first Sockham 101. Um, so just so y'all know the the origins of this, we realized that there was a lot of new folks that were coming into Sockham, folks that were interested in Sockham, and even folks that have been members for a while um, that had requested just sort of a refresher on who we are as an organization, what our history is, how we're structured. And so this is the first quarterly Sockham 101. So our hope is to do these at least once a quarter. We may do them more often if it's helpful. But for folks that need a refresher, for folks that are already members, for folks that are interested, and for new members, we want to make sure we're providing a regular opportunity to just give sort of a, a recap and overview of who we are as an organization. So um, Erica and Adam and Chauncey is going to be joining us later, and I will be walking you all through a little bit of who we are as an organization. Um, we're going to talk about our missions and values, um, our approach to community organizing, and our theory of change. We're going to dive into our organizational structure a bit, so you you know about that, um, and then talk a little bit about our leadership development opportunities and how you can get plugged in. Um, and then at the end, we want to make sure that there's still time for, for questions and answers. So our plan is to go about 45 minutes on presentation and then make sure for folks that want to hang on after, if there's questions, we'll have uh, stay on as long as you want to, to talk through any any questions. Um, and if you want, as we go, if there's questions that come up or comments, please feel free to, to go ahead and use the chat. Well, without further ado, let's let's get going. So um, Sockham, as uh, most folks probably know, we've been around for a while. We were founded in 1972 in the coal fields of East Tennessee 
and the origins of Stockholm are really rooted around uh, issues related to the coal industry. And so um, Stockholm was born out of communities in Upper East Tennessee, really seeing the harm that was being done by the coal industry, poisoned well water. There's folks dealing with black lung in the mines. A lot of early members were uh, members of the United Mine Workers, folks dealing with strip mining and the impacts that was having on people's land and, and public health. Um, and, uh, folks decided to get together and to say, Hey, we haven't had much luck trying to address these issues on our own. Maybe if we get together as a community and band together, maybe we can actually address some of these issues and get some, get some movement. Um, so Sockham was born out of communities in the coal fields coming together and saying, we are going to act collectively rather than as individuals to address the problems that are impacting us. Um, and as you can see, some of the photos here are some photos from our early years. We have a lot um, online about our history. If you go to our website, there's a whole thing called the Sockham's Reflection uh, uh, book that was produced in the 90s that does a history of the, the first 25 years of Sockham. And there's amazing stories in there. There's some videos on the website that you can dive into. Um, and I really encourage you all to do that if, you're, if you just want to know a little bit more about, um, about our history. Um, I do want to make one note on that this image here, this Sockham Sentinel, um, every quarter since 1972, Sockham has produced a newsletter to keep members informed about what's going on in the organization. And this is the very first Sockham Sentinel from April 28, 1972. Um, and so over the years, while we were founded in the coal fields, um, the a structure formed in our organization around uh, county-based chapters. And so over the years, other issues besides coal field issues came up. Co folks were dealing with issues around education, around housing, around other public health and environmental issues. And so over the years, um, while we were founded as Save Our Cumberland Mountains, folks realized that the work went beyond the scope of just coal field issues. There was folks in Middle Tennessee and West Tennessee that were wanting to get involved as well. And uh, in the early 2000s, we changed our name to Statewide Organizing for Community Empowerment to better reflect who we were as an organization. And so we'll dive a little bit more into like, you know, what's the DNA of Sockham uh, as, we, as we go throughout the evening, um, but just wanted to share a little bit uh, about our history and our founding. And so I'm going to go toss it over to Erica to talk about our mission and our values. Thank you, Austin. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Erica Davis. I currently have the honor uh, of serving as the president of the Sockham Board, and I'm so happy to uh, have an opportunity to talk a little bit about this, uh, this organization tonight and uh, get people excited about Sockham and uh, to learn more about who we are and, and what our lifeblood is. Um, so Sockham is a 50-year-old member-led organization dedicated to empowering Tennesseans in their efforts to have a greater voice in determining their own future. And that is key. <laughs> uh, we accomplish this by training local leaders and by developing and sustaining long-term democratically run and locally rooted membership organizations in communities throughout Tennessee. Together, SACA members work towards a Tennessee where all people are treated with dignity, where our environment is preserved and protected, and where corporations and public officials are held accountable to the needs of the people. And uh, while we've recently reworked this mission statement and, and the values statements uh, will we'll go over in the next slide. Uh, this has really been true to Sockham's core from its, its very founding uh, 50 years ago. <clears throat> and a little bit about our values. Um, I'm not going to read every single one of these, but um, I, I think a good sorry about my cat, a good summation is um, that we as Sockham believe that extraordinary change is rooted in the power of ordinary people. And 
uh, this this rings so true to me in my experience as a member of SOCOM. Uh, I've been involved with SOCOM since I think 2016. Uh, I was in college at the time, maybe 2015, and uh, and um, had the opportunity to work with some folks in uh, Campbell and Claiborne counties and in the Clear Fork Valley. Um, just ordinary people living their ordinary lives advocating for their homes and their loved ones and um, just on and just on a remarkable mission for extraordinary change um, and those same folks are still together you know united working for change in their community and um, I saw all of these values on the screen in front of you um, demonstrated in the the offshoot of SOCOM in that community and have seen it in um, all of our campaigns statewide since I became a member. Um, and overall, I think what I would emphasize most about our values is that um, SOCOM is, is about this idea of the common good and that um, the things that we strive to achieve are for all regardless of social status, regardless of economic status, age, race, gender, sexual orientation, or political party, um, our members' goals transcend these individual identities. And it's all about this common vision uh, that we pursue strategically, um, that we pursue uh, through the organizational structure we'll review and, and familiarize you with. Um, and it's rooted in these values and, and this history um, that, that Austin reviewed earlier. Um, and it's also rooted in a whole lot of love and a whole lot of commitment to this work and enthusiasm. And it doesn't take any special skills or, or training, though uh, SOCOM is committed to providing that along the way through things like our deep listening uh, sessions and leadership training and development, which you also see reflected in our, in our values. Thanks, Erica. One at the root, as, as Erica was talking about our mission and our values, we believe that extraordinary change is rooted in the power of ordinary people. But we also know that change doesn't happen magically, that it's not just good intentions that actually allow folks to see the change that they want to see happen in their own communities. It takes people coming together in an organized way to affect change. And so um, just to briefly go over our theory of change and how we understand organizing, um, our local unit of organizing, we'll talk about more when we talk about organizational structure, is the chapter. And we believe in long haul organizing that's rooted in identifying issues that are of concern in our local communities and then running issue campaigns around those identified issues um, that we've identified with our communities. Um, but we believe in long haul work that our chapters are not just about a single issue. We will run issue campaigns to address concerns that come up. But our hope and our real power is to develop relationships over time, um, de develop relationships and chapters that can last five years, 10 years, 20 years. So it's not about a single issue. It's about people coming together to see what are the issues that matter in the present moment and how do we address those together. And then when other issues pop up, we have the relationship, connection, and training and skills to address other issues as well. So the basic cycle of organizing at a local level is it has to start with listening to our community and understanding and identifying what are the shared problems, concerns, and hopes um, within our community. And there's, there's lots of those. But trying to identify what are some of those things that are deeply and widely felt in our community that our neighbors care about, that we care about, that are about the collective well-being of folks in our neighborhood, in our town, in our city. And then once we've identified a shared challenge, we have to turn that challenge into an issue. And what we mean when we say identifying an issue, it is nothing more than a problem that has a clearly identified solution. And we have a process by which we, as a, as a group that's starting to form, 
we've identified a problem, and then we actually have to do the research and work to figure out what is an actual solution that we can work for. If we don't have an identified solution that we're working towards, it's hard to organize effectively. And so once we've identified an issue, we have to analyze power and understand within our communities, who are the people that hold the levers of power and actually have the ability to enact that change that we want to see. In some cases, this may be local elected officials that have the power to, to affect change. In some cases, they, this may be a business or a corporation. Um, in some cases, this may be our neighbors that it's coming together and we need to have a collective solution in our neighborhood um, to address a given issue. But we really have to understand who has the ability to enact the change that we want to see. And then once we've been able to uh, analyze the power dynamics, then we're able to develop and implement strategic campaigns. And those are about setting clear goals and measurable goals and actually coming up with a plan for how we will act together to move those power holders um, in, the way that, in the way that they need to go. Throughout that whole process at every step of the way, we have to continue to listen to our neighbors. We have to listen to our community and build our base. Um, oftentimes, uh, folks who are harming our communities have money. They have certain forms of power, whether that's through elected office or it's a, it's a big company that has a lot of stake in our community. Um, what we have is we have people. We have um, people who can come together and with a collective voice actually shift dynamics of power and so we have to be talking to people we have to be listening and we have to be building our base every step of the way and so before i turn it over to adam to talk a little bit more about the differences between organizing and other forms of social change just want to give a, a brief video um, this video is a as an interview with maureen o'connell who is the founding director of Stockholm. And uh, she just shares some pretty powerful stories about what organizing looked like in the coal fields um, and what it meant to act together rather than as individuals. So y'all let me know. The audio should work. So y'all let me know. The audio coming through. It's like even after their own local problem was resolved, however it was resolved, they would be hooked on Sockham, on that sense of you were in a struggle for something really important. A whole lot of Sockham's early membership were retired United Mine Workers. They came out of a union background. They came out of a background of, if you have a problem, you have an organization that helps with it. Very strong goal of Sockham in the early days was to ban strip mining. When it became apparent in the early days of Sockham that we could not get strip mining banned, it was a gut punch. In some ways I think it made people stronger because it was much bigger than any one situation. Sockham started as a very local five county organization and that was it. Very quickly we expanded trying to work on something locally. Often there were ways, there were strategies locally, but there was at the root of the problem something much bigger than local. People began to hear about people having the same problems in other parts of the state. The more people having the same kind of problem in other whole parts of the state really made your case and your effort stronger and also produced much more power. I can't tell you how scary a time the early days were. House burnings, cars were shot up, lots of people got threatening phone calls. But the one who um, I was most worried about was John Johnson, who lived on Stinking Creek. Stinking Creek was one of the toughest places. It's where strip mine inspectors were beat up. This was where John Johnson lived. 
When he came to Sockham, he was so timid and nervous. When I heard his, when we heard, many of us heard that his house had burned, it was like, John will be in a mental hospital. You know, John, what is he, go you know, this is horrible that this was John Johnson. And he, his house was burned because he testified, this nervous, edgy man who was afraid in Stinking Creek, testified at, in Nashville at a hearing, publicly, you know. Peggy Matthews and I, I remember, went out there. So there's John, and uh, he says, well, what else can they do to me now? I, I tell you, the, the, uh, just the raw courage, the, uh, it blew me away, to be honest. So that's what Sockham could do to people. Because it was much bigger than any one situation. Adam, I'll turn it to you on that note. Yeah, thanks so much. I always, uh, that video always empowers me and makes me think of the, the traditions that we're working in. Uh, my name's Adam Hughes. I'm the East Tennessee organizer with Sockham. Um, I have been the East Tennessee organizer since October of 2014. And I hope that's given me some background, some credentials to be able to start approaching this question, what is community organizing? what are we doing? Um, so I want to draw the distinction between three different types of organization. And I want to make it really important. I'm not saying our model is better than any other. I think there are a lot of good ways to approach the issue of working for justice. I'm just trying to define this is what we are. And I'll start with direct service organizations. And as you read this, if you can think of an example of a direct service organization, can you just stick it in the chat? Um, direct service organizations, um, you have a range of attitudes. They do important work directly supporting people who have immediate material needs. So when it comes to root causes, service organizations understand positive change through provision of aid to the individual. A soup kitchen is a good example of a direct service organization. Again, very important. Um, Planned Parenthood is a good example, providing direct support, though I think Planned Parenthood fits into multiple categories here too. Um, the next group are advocacy organizations. And again, if you can think of an advocacy organization and put that in the chat, they focus on the lack of knowledge of those in power as a primary root cause. So the solutions involve educating those in power. Experts on the issue speak on behalf of those directly affected, and to the extent that they sometimes have a base, it's mobilized to support certain experts or people in power who are helping to solve problems. Um, there's some great examples. AARP is an advocacy organization. Um, Parts of Planned Parenthood model is an advocacy work. Um, Tennessee Equality Project, great, uh, great example there. Um, human rights campaign. Um, there's so many, and again, this is good and important work. Many of our close allies, um, the uh, um, Southern Environmental Law Center, for instance. But this third category, the one that Sockham fits in, and if you can think of other organizing groups, um, put those in the chat as well. An organizing approach focuses on identifying shared self-interest among people who by virtue of their lived experiences are affected by a given issue. Change occurs through the collective planning, organization and action of people with shared self-interest. And we focus on systematic or systemic change. Um, and that's really what inspires me by Sockham's work. As Erica will, will get into later, Sockham's board are all people who have come to the organization because they were directly affected by the things in question. We have no big funders or outside people on our board. It's people who have been threatened by maybe losing their housing, people who've been threatened by environmental catastrophe because they're living near um, coal mines or other places. And that to me is the strength of what we're doing. We're finding folks in communities across Tennessee who are affected by problems of justice and we're working together to solve it. And of course, 
this is long haul work. This is work that takes years in many cases. Um, if you can go to the next slide. Um, and I just wanted to give a few examples of what this looks like over the years. Um, on the left there, you can see on top and bottom, um, some images from Sockham's campaign to save Fall Creek Falls, the state park from being strip mined. This work started in the early 90s. People getting around their kitchen table in White and Van Buren counties who would be affected by coal mining happening nearby, thinking out how do we run a campaign together to save our beloved state park and save our water. You can see on top a banner drop that we did in the 90s. And then in 2000, when Sockham finally won and got those mine, that land declared unsuitable for mining, that was the cartoon that was uh, run in the uh, Chattanooga um, Times Free Press. So that was a decade long campaign that ended in success. In the middle there, as I'm sure many people on this call know, I see a few of them right now, um, are some images from the fight to save Murfreesboro from the expansion of the Middle Point landfill. The top image is 2016, members getting together and working to uh, save the landfill. The bottom image is 2022, um, and their Stop the Stink campaign has won over and over again and blocked uh, expansion of the Middle Point landfill. But yet those members in Rutherford County know until there's a final victory that they're going to keep working together and organizing. And beyond that, they'll find the next issue. Over on the right, I want to talk about some of our housing work. Um, for months and months, we were working together to put the focus on discriminatory lending on local banks. Um, the image above is from one of our prayer vigils. We would go to weekly prayer vigils outside the uh, then First Tennessee Bank to try to call them to account for their history of discriminatory lending. And then on the bottom, after year, a long time doing that work, you can see Sockham got the opportunity to partner on a community benefits plan with Truist Bank that got all a lot of money guaranteed for equitable lending. And uh, I got to go with our then vice president to uh, Atlanta, Georgia, and she testified in front of the bank president about what we had learned and about her own experience living in insecure housing in Knoxville. Um, and the roots of that come to our, our housing work today, got their start there. And many of those folks doing that are still active today. Um, so we know this is long haul work. There's so many examples. The solar array in Cumberland County, we started working on in 2017. That's only now getting final approval. It was 2015. I started going to Washington, D.C. with SACA members to advocate for more money to clean up old coal mine sites. And just yesterday, I was at a meeting in Claiborne County talking about how that money that we did win and get passed in the federal budget how is that going to be equitably distributed? So Sockham has needed every one of those 51 years now to get some of what we want accomplished. And um, with members like the amazing members I work with every day, I think we've got another five decades or however long it takes to win justice for all communities across Tennessee. All right, so uh, Erica again. Hi, everyone. Um, I am going to spend a couple of minutes talking about uh, Sockham's organizational structure. Um, so as a, you know, a decent sized nonprofit organization, um, we have, um, you know, strategically put together a structure that makes sense for uh, the the type of work that we do and uh, the type of values that we uh, you know hold for our communities we also hold uh, for ourselves as an organization and um, I, I hope you see that <laughs> see that reflected in the structure we'll go over so um, here's an overview of of the structure, um, but we'll we'll break it down piece by piece and talk a little bit more about um, each component. So the essential building block of our organization um, is the chapter. And uh, as you see here, we have chapters currently active across the state. Um, 
some chapters are newer than others and and that's that's wonderful um to see and and see how chapters can learn from uh, more established chapters and how more established chapters can be invigorated by the work um, being done by newer chapters. Um, so chapters are formed at the local level uh, primarily to work on issues particular to that geographic area. Um, but you know frequently we see statewide campaigns pop up such as our public education work that is um, that is is very mobilizing right now. Um, and we see all the chapters, you know, across the state participate in um, statewide efforts as well. Um, and each chapter is represented on the board of SOCOM. Um, so SOCOM has a board of elected members. Um, as Adam mentioned, these are members of the organization who um, have participated in campaigns most of the time who, or who, people who are um, interested in using their particular organizational skills to contribute to the functioning of the organization who care about what's happening in their communities. Um, they're not, you know, just big funders or uh, professionals at running an organization. Um, I'm currently on the board. We're all just normal people uh, <laughs> doing our best to, uh, you know, take the information that's presented to us and, and make decisions uh, to continue our organization on a strategic path and to continue its growth and um, to continue seeing seeing um, some of these amazing wins that, that Adam was um, discussing. So, um, our officer positions, um, so the president, vice president, secretary, and treasurer um, are all elected by the membership. Uh, members have an opportunity to do that at our annual meeting each year, and at-large delegate, delegates are also elected by the full membership. Um, and an at-large delegate um, and an at-large member, um, that just means someone who is not currently affiliated with one of those chapters that you saw on the map on the previous screen. Um, so if you're like me in Davidson County, right now we are at large members. Um, and so that's, that's what that means. <clears throat> And then we have our wonderful staff. Um, the, the board and the staff do work closely together, um, but are, are distinct and um, you know, serve different roles within the organization. Um, the, the staff is, um, is, I'm trying to get to the slide on my screen, <laughs> um, is composed of our executive director, uh, Austin, uh, our director of finance, development and operations, which how do you give a title to Linda Cowan that encompasses all that she does for the organization? Um, we have our, our organizing staff, um, some communication staff, um, and interns. I started as an intern with Sockham um, back in the day, and uh, it's a pretty good, pretty good um, opportunity for leadership development and continued um, involvement in the organization as a result of that. Um, but our staff are um, paid members of the organization uh, whose, whose role is to assist the chapters and at-large members in uh, carrying out their goals, whether that's uh, bouncing ideas off or helping facilitate uh, ideas or meetings or um, providing training so that members can uh, facilitate those things on their own um, or um, just, a, it, I mean, it's, it's impossible to describe um, every single thing that our staff members do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, they, they keep the membership afloat, keep the finances afloat, and um, are, are full of wisdom and knowledge and passion for this work. Um, so we're all very thankful for the work that they do. <clears throat> awesome. So the last, last piece we're going to talk about on organizational structure before we talk about membership um, is our statewide issue committees. So if you go back to the, the chart up here, so we have the, the board with the executive committee elected by our membership. Um, each chapter 
appoints their own representative to the board. The board is responsible for making those key policy decisions. But then we also have issue committees that while our work is very rooted locally, and we know that our power comes from local level organizing, as Erica mentioned earlier, oftentimes there are issues that come up that are uh, multi-county in scope or often statewide in scope. Um, and it's a really important that we have statewide issues both to um, address those issues that we can't solve locally and also as a way to engage our at-large members into the work as well. Um, so currently, um, last year our membership voted for public education to be a long-term statewide issue committee. Um, and so there's amazing work um, going on, on um, at a local level around public education, and we're working to expand that of how do we connect the local issues to the state legislature as well. This past October, we did a lot of work around the third grade retention policy last October up until early this year. Um, and we're working now through the public education work on really focusing on how do we get folks engaged at a local level with their school boards? And then how do we run issue campaigns at a local level um, around the issues that are coming up within local school boards? Um, also last year, we uh, had a number of chapters focused on the Jackson Law, which is a local level policy to help uh, have more community involvement and local level decision making around the creation and formation of landfills. Um, and so we've had a number of victories on that front. Um, and at this year's annual meeting, we're going to discuss whether we want to continue having the Jackson Law as a statewide focus or whether we want to shift that to something else. One other item that's come up as a possible statewide issue committee is housing. We know there's incredible work going on right now in Knoxville around the anti-eviction work and the right to counsel policy work and tenant organizing. There's a question we'll bring up at the annual meeting and we'll have a workshop around it to discuss whether it makes sense for housing to become another statewide issue committee. Um, and the basic structure of these committees is we have some folks at a chapter level and at-large members um, who will join together at regular intervals to discuss how do we connect our local level work around this issue to state level policy. All right, and then I'm gonna turn it over to Chauncey. Chauncey, are you on? I am, yes, hey. I'm gonna turn it over to Chauncey to talk about what does it mean to be a member? Right. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, I uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited uh, to to talk about this because like I really I I love Sockham and 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 one of the things that I love about um, being a member of Sockham is one that this organization does a really amazing job of um, actually uh, you know being member run um and 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 respecting members and part of that has to do with i think just the great way that Sockham is structured to have um pretty like uh you know delineated uh responsibilities that we have as members and then um uh, but also the benefits that we get right so um you know in in this slide like the the responsibilities that you have like as a as a SOCOM member are, um, you know, like uh, identifying issues um, and we're given autonomy to create our own chapters. So I'm currently an at-large member and also an at-large delegate of the board um, in East Tennessee and Greene County. Um, and I haven't yet been able to find six neighbors to form a chapter, but um, I do, uh, one of the things that's wonderful is that like I, have in the course of being a member um, been, um, you know, uh, given guidance on how to lobby and 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 done lobbying events, um, given like literacy on not only like the Jackson law, but like different water regulations and things like that. And certainly at big member gatherings, like I feel very much um, connected to uh, other members and, and chapter work that's happening, right? So, a big responsibility 
is is our dues that we have and i say big in terms of like the dues are very uh are, are very like um i think um uh minimal in terms of of uh like just a, a yearly amount but the dues actually go towards like supporting the work and um and and that's uh, I think that that's and it's that little bit of investment in in the organization um, that I think helps us all feel kind of connected to that. So um, there's um, it might be on a on on the following slide, but the this um, this kind of iron rule of of organizing that I think Sockham does a great job of, and I'm. I'm defining like iron rule as like the strength of iron, not like iron and like, you know, you know, kind of rigid, uh, but kind of never do for people what they can do for themselves. So like certainly uh, in other like campaigns or like other organizations, I have felt a little helpless about like either I'm just one person or like I don't I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to talk to uh, legislators necessarily. I don't um, what is what is the way that I do deep listening or something. And Sockham does a great job of um, yeah, like not, uh, you know, the staff has their own kind of defined responsibilities and they're, and they're out there looking for new opportunities or, um, you know, circling back around to make sure that, that people feel invested. However, in that process, we as members are given a lot of like education and opportunity, uh, and little like laboratories to, to try out our new skills, which I think is really helpful. So I certainly, have figured out how to become a better part of my community just through being like a Sockham uh, member. And um, and yeah, and also like our uh like our whole structure is very like um is is member led, right? So we all it is a it is a democracy. We all get to decide on things. Our board members, like Erica pointed out, like it's not uh you know legacy people or different things like that it's just like members who who want to uh you know commit to two hour to two years um to uh to do a monthly meeting where we think about like how to kind of navigate uh some priorities but at the end of the day it's the membership that puts it uh into place and um and then yeah the Sockham Sentinel is is really is really great. I I always learn a lot about um, what Sockham is doing, and and I don't know. I always feel like a sense, kind of a glowy uh, sense of accomplishment just from reading like um, and seeing people uh, that that I know uh, in print doing things, <laughs> and also we get to see the 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 little victories along the way and the and the big victories um, in the Sentinel, and uh, and then I know we've got our annual meeting coming up and certainly our in-person gatherings and annual meetings are, are are really are really wonderful um so yeah that's just in a in a few minutes i could talk for an hour but i just highlight real um yeah i i certainly uh like soccer membership is like we we are given a little bit of um responsibility because we actually get i think real benefits um and skills from being a member so yeah. all right thank you austin yeah thanks chauncey and we do have a membership manual if y'all for folks who have become members chauncey has sent you one in the mail um but we also have that online as well that talks in more depth about um membership benefits and responsibilities and, and what it means to be a member but at its root, um, Sockham is a member-run organization, and we're about developing leaders in our community um, and developing each other. Staff has a role in helping to facilitate and bring folks together and help set up meetings. And to an extent, staff takes some leadership on training opportunities. But it's also a core value that we know that there's a wealth of wisdom within our membership. And so you'll see it just about any training we do, there are members that are taking part alongside staff to do that leadership development work. If there's someone in, in one county that's dealing with an issue and we know a member that's dealt with that issue or has experience in another county, part of our role as staff is to make sure that y'all get connected to each other and are gleaning from each other's wisdom. But um, 
with leadership development, this is something that throughout our history has been at the core of what we do. Um, and we've worked on developing a more clear and structured leadership development agenda for the rest of 2023 and 2024. Um, the way that we offer workshops and, and trainings, we'll do that at a chapter level. So if there are folks that you're working on a campaign within your local chapter and you need support or training on a given subject, our organizing staff will, will work with the membership to get a training together and do uh, uh, a workshop on that subject. Also, we um, like to do regional trainings at intervals throughout the year where we're bringing together multiple counties for a longer workshop uh, opportunity. For example, this Saturday in Knox, Knoxville, we're doing a five-hour organizing 101 workshop where we're going through a number of uh, organizing principles in more depth and using an existing campaign um, as sort of our, our case study for the training. Um, and then also, absolutely when it's needed, we want to be able to provide one-on-one -on -one support for our leaders as well. But the workshops that we offer uh, include identifying good campaign issues. So how do you turn a problem into an issue and what are the characteristics of a, of a good organizing issue? Having effective one-on-one -on -one organizing conversations and how we build our base, how we bring new people in. Um, elements of a good chapter meeting, so meeting facilitation skills, power mapping and power analysis. So how do we understand those levers of power that are at play in our community? Campaign planning, finding common ground and disagreement, grassroots fundraising and citizen lobbying. So these are all workshops that we've done before that we can run either in a larger group setting, a regional setting or at a chapter level. So before we go into sort of the, the final next step and how to get involved, we know that was a lot of information condensed in a short amount of time. So we want to open it up to see what, what are questions that have come up or thoughts or reflections from folks on the call. Austin, is there any way I got kicked off the internet? So I missed a big chunk, like what Chauncey was saying. Um, is there any way that we can have access to the slides that you all presented today? Absolutely. Yep. Okay, thank you. We I can would send appreciate that to the list for sure. Thank you. Yep. Any other questions from folks? Right. Well, we're going to just we're trying to keep to our keep to our time. I know we're a couple minutes over. We're just going to share some next steps of how to get plugged in and involved. Um, so if y'all go to Sockham.org backslash calendar, all of our public events, our trainings, our chapter meetings, we try to keep updated on this calendar. Um, this is not comprehensive. This is just the things that can be sort of advertised publicly. Um, we also, if you are a member or if you signed up as a subscriber um, on Monday or sometimes Tuesday of every week, we'll send a weekly e-newsletter that has everything that's going on that week. So that's another way to stay updated. Um, and so please, if you're if you haven't already, make sure you're on that on that email list. And if you're ever wondering, feel free to to check out our calendar to see things that are going on. Um, one item that is coming up soon um, is our annual meeting. And this is an opportunity once a year we get together, we have fun, we, we do workshops, um, we get an update about the organization. Sometimes there's decision-making, um, envisioning activities, um, and we also vote on new board members at our annual meeting. This year is gonna be incredible. We have the Caddy Wampus Puppet Council that's gonna be leading some amazing activities for us in the morning on Saturday. And they're gonna do an art and movement uh, giant puppet making workshop for us on Sunday. And so if y'all are interested, now is the time to register. Um, it is actually past our technical deadline, but we've extended it to uh, this weekend. If folks wanna register, it's um, at Cumberland Mountain State Park on October 7th and 8th. 
um, and all the info to register is uh, right there on that graphic. Um, and we would love to see you there. Uh, Sockham, if you're a member, covers the cost for hotel, meals, everything. Um, so we would love to see you there. And then finally, if you are not already, we would love for you to become a member. Um, and so if you go to that link, uh, bit.ly backslash Sockham membership, or you can scan that QR code, uh, that'll pop up the form um, and walk you through how to become a member. Um, and we would we would love for for you to join Sockham and um, work with us to make sure we're um, identifying issues, building our base, and running issue campaigns in our communities to improve improve the lives of ourselves and our neighbors. So, anything else from Adam, Chauncey, Erica, or any questions? From anyone else? All right. Well, thank you all for spending some time with us today. And um, if you have any questions at all, feel free to reach out and we'll be in touch. And Adam Chauncey. Erica, if y'all want to hang on just a few minutes.